Hey guys, so um, we are moving on to the next chapter in our book. Um, we are still reading The Witches by Roald Dahl, um, and we are on, uh, I think, chapter eight officially, um, but this is going to be the recipe, and um, in our last chapter, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the last thing that we experienced, and um, the the Grand High Witch was um, singing her, uh, what they, what the narrator called an awful gloating song um and she talked about how uh all of the kids should disappear and um how the teachers would be sweeping up the dead mice that the children um turned into so um in this next chapter we're going to be talking about um the recipe here and if you remember back um the Grand High Witch said that she created something called Formula 86 Delay Delayed Action Mouse Maker. So this will be um, the recipe for that. And before we get started, I want you to um, think about this reflection question. And this one is, have you ever followed a recipe in order to cook or bake something? And if you have, what did you make and what were some of the ingredients? Um, if you haven't ever done that before, then you can ask your parents and they can kind of help you out with this question because I'm sure that your parents have. Or you can um, make something up or look something up, but of course with your parents' permission. So um, that first question is, have you ever followed a recipe in order to cook or bake something? And what did you make and what were some of the ingredients? So you should be writing at least three sentences to answer this question. Um, and the vocabulary words for this chapter are going to be puzzlement, puzzlement, clamor, and dispose. Um, I have used the word dispose before, so you may have heard that one. The other two words I don't typically use in my regular vocabulary, so I want you to listen for those as I read this chapter and um, start thinking about what they might mean based on the clues in the text. All right, the recipe. I hope you haven't forgotten that while all this was going on, I was still stuck behind the screen on my hands and knees with one eye glued to the crack. I don't know how long I had been there, but it seemed like forever. The worst part of it was not being allowed to cough or make a sound and knowing that if I did, I was as good as dead. And all the way through, I was living in constant terror that one of the witches in the back row was going to get a whiff of my presence through those special nose holes of hers. My only hope as I saw it was the fact that I hadn't washed for days. That and the never-ending excitement and clapping and shouting that was going on in the room. The witches were thinking of nothing except the Grand High Witch up there on the platform and her great plan for wiping out all of the children of England. They certainly weren't sniffing around for a child in the room. In their wildest dreams, if witches have dreams, that would never have occurred to any of them. I kept still and prayed. The Grand High Witch's dreadful gloating song was over now, and the audience was clapping madly and shouting, Brilliant! Sensational! Marvelous! You are a genius, oh brainy one! It is a thrilling invention, this delayed action mouse maker. It is a winner! And the beauty of it is that the teachers will be the ones who bump off the stinking little children. It won't be us doing it. We shall never be caught. Witches are never caught! snapped the Grand High Witch. Attention now! I want everybody's attention and I am about to tell you what you must do to prepare Formula 86 Action Delayed 86 Delayed Action Mouse Maker. Suddenly there came a great gasp from the audience. This was followed by hubbub of shrieking and yelling and I saw many of the witches leaping to their feet and pointing to the platform and crying out, Mice! 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 She's done it! To show us, the brainy one has turned two children into mice, and there they are. I looked toward the platform. The mice, there were, the mice were there all right. Two of them, running around near the Grand High Witch's skirt. But these were not field mice, or house mice, or wood mice, or harvest mice. They were white mice. I recognized them immediately as my own little William and Mary. 
Mice! shouted the audience. Our leader has made mice to appear out of nowhere. Get the mouse traps. Fetch the cheese. I saw the Grand High Witch peering down at the floor and staring with obvious puzzlement at William and Mary. She bent lower to get a closer look. Then she straightened up and shouted, Quiet! The audience became silent and sat down. These mice are nothing to do with me, she shouted. These mice are pet mice. These mice are quite obviously belonging to some repellent little child in the hotel. A boy it will be for a certainty because girls are not keeping pet mice. A boy, cried the witches. A filthy, smelly little boy. We'll swipe him. We'll swizzle him. We'll have his tripes for breakfast. Silence, shouted the Grand High Witch raising her hands. You know perfectly well you must do nothing to draw attention to yourselves while you are living in the hotel. Let us all, by all means, get rid of this evil-smelling little squirt, but we must do it as quietly as possible, for are we not all of us the most respectable ladies of the Royal Society for the prevention of cruelty to children? What do you suggest then, oh brainy one? They cried out. How shall we dispose of this small pile of filth? They're talking about me, I thought. These females are actually talking about how to kill me. I began to sweat. Whoever he is is not important, announced the Grand High Witch. Leave him to me. I shall smell him out and turn him into a mackerel and have him dished up for supper. Bravo, cried the witches. Cut off his head and chop off his tail and fry him in hot butter. You can imagine that none of this was making me feel very comfortable. William and Mary were still running around on the platform. And I saw the Grand High Witch aim a swift running kick at William. She caught him right on the point of her toe and sent him flying. She did the same to Mary. Her aim was extraordinary. She would have made a great football player. She... Both mice crashed against the wall, and for a few moments they lay stunned. Then they all got to their feet and scampered away. Attention again, the Grand High Witch was shouting. Here's a picture of her kicking the mice. There goes William. Poor William. I will now give you the recipe for concocting formula, 68 delayed action mouse maker. Get out pencils and paper. Handbags were opened all over the room and notebooks were fished out. Give us the recipe, oh brainy one, cried the audience impatiently. Tell us the secret. First, said the Grand High Witch, I had to find something that would cause the children to become very small very quickly. And what was that, cried the audience. That part was simple, the Grand High Witch said. All you have to do if you are wishing to make a child very small is look at him through the wrong end of a telescope. Oh, she's a wonder, cried the audience. Who else would have thought of a thing like that? So you take the wrong end of the telescope, continued the Grand High Witch, and you boil it until it gets soft. How long does that take, they asked her. Twenty-one hours of boiling, answered the Grand High Witch. And while this is going on, you take exactly 45 brown mice and you chop off their tails with a carving knife and you fry the tails in hair oil until they are nice and crisp. What do we do with all those mice who have their tails chopped off? asked the audience. You simmer them in frog juice for one hour, came the answer. But listen to me. So far, I have only given you the easy part of the recipe. The really difficult part is to put in something that will have a genuine delay action result. Something that can be eaten by children on a certain day, but which, which will not start working on them until 9 o'clock the next morning when they arrive at school. What did you come up with, oh brainy one? They called out. Tell us the secret. The secret announced the Grand High Witch triumphantly, is an alarm clock. An alarm clock, they cried. It's a stroke of genius. Of course it is, said the Grand High Witch. You can set 
a 24 hour alarm clock today at exactly nine o'clock tomorrow it will will go off but we will need five million alarm clocks cried the audience we will need one for each child idiots shouted the grand high witch if you are vaunting a steak you do not cook the whole cow it is the same with the alarm clocks one clock will make enough for a thousand children here is what you do you set the alarm clock to go off at nine o'clock tomorrow morning then you roast it in the oven until it is crisp and tender then you writing it down we are your grandness we are they cried next said the grand high witch you take your boiled telescope and your fried mouse tails and your cooked mice and you roast alarm clock and all together you put them into a mixer. Then you mix them at full speed. This will give you a nice thick paste. While the mixer is still mixing, you must add it to the yolk of Van Gruntel's egg. A Gruntel's egg, cried the audience. What shall do? We shall do that. Underneath all the clamor that was going on, I heard one witch in the back row saying to her neighbor, I'm getting a bit old to go bird nesting. Those ruddy gruntles always nest very high up. So you mix the eggs, said the Grand High, the, the grand high Witch went on. And one after the other, you also mix in the following items. The cl claw of a crab cruncher, the beak of a blabber snitch, the snout of a grobble squirt, and the tongue of a cat springer. I trust you are not having any trouble finding those. Not at all, they cried out. We will spear the blubber snitch and trap the crab cruncher and shoot the grobble squirt and catch the cat springer in his burrow. Excellent, said the Grand High Witch. When you have mixed everything together in the mixer, you will have the most marvelous looking green li liquid. Put one drop, just one titchy droplet of this liquid into chocolate or of sweet and at nine o'clock the next morning the child who ate it will turn into a mouse in 20, 26 seconds but one word of warning never increase the dose never put more than one drop into each sweet or chocolate and never give more than one sweet or chocolate to each child an overdose of delayed action mouse makeover will mess up the timing of the alarm clock and cause the child to turn into a mouse too early a large overdose might even have an instant effect and you wouldn't want that would you you wouldn't want the children turning into mice right there in your sweet shops that would give you the give the game away so be careful do not overdose all right so in this chapter, we heard all about the recipe for making the delayed action mouse maker. Um, so here for the next question, I've got three here for you. Um, so if you need to write them down again, you can pause and write them down. Um, these questions should be answered in complete sentences like we've talked about before. Um, and number one, you need at least two sentences if not more because it says in detail um number two name three ingredients so you just need to have one sentence with all three of them make sure it's a complete sentence and not a list and number three um it needs at least one complete sentence as well so number one is describe in detail what happened to william and mary those are the mice um, it, describe what happened with them. This would be a great time for you to use sequential order and say, first this happened, then this, next, and last. Um, number two is name three ingredients that go into formula 86 delayed action mouse maker. So three of the ingredients. Um, depending on what you choose to write down, spelling won't necessarily matter because some of those words are silly words anyways. Um, but just do your best and try to hear those sounds and number three is why must the witches be careful not to overdose the children with formula 68 86 delayed action mouse makers so why must they be careful not to overdose the children um and if you have any questions please let me know our next chapter is called bruno jenkins disappears <laughs>